Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. Well, there have been fires everywhere this year, and while some fires are getting under control in some areas, some fires are not. Minnesota has uh, not been spared the wildfire situation here uh, recently. This, uh, as of the time of this recording, that Greenwood fire, over 3,000 acres up in northeastern Minnesota, and uh, uh, I think there's some other fires going on. And uh, I was, uh, I've got our friends from Saskatchewan on here. I'm going to bring on uh, Trevor Montgomery and Barry Prawl from Tazan Lake Lodge. How are you guys doing? Good, Brett. Doing Good. great, Brett. Thanks. And I got uh, me and Dan. Let's just bring all four of us on here right now and just start talking about things a little bit. And I want to talk about wildfires because for a while there, fellas, it sounded like northern Saskatchewan was just like one big fire. It, it sounded like the whole half of the province was on fire up there. You guys were battling. And, and Trevor, you actually had some up-close experiences with those fires that I want to talk about. But how many fires do you think you had up in northern Saskatchewan this year, Trevor? Uh, I don't know exactly a number to tell you the truth, Brett, but uh, the fire map just shows, you know, hot spots and fires everywhere if you look on that. I know uh, in my experiences when I was up there, I could look in a 360-degree circle and all it was was smoke plumes everywhere on the horizon. So that's it's pretty wild. It was a wild year. That's, that's crazy. Uh, it sounds like for the most part they're out now or do you still have fires going on? Uh, there's still hot spots up there. We've had a bunch of rain in the north over the last couple of weeks. You know, basically what's happened now is summer's done and fall season has come. So with that, of course, often we get cooler temperatures and more moisture, and that's really helping to control a lot of these fires now. They're just hot spots, a lot of them. So, uh, of course, Taz and TV is going on right now. We'll talk about Taz and TV a little bit more here in a second, but uh, both you guys are involved in Taz and Lake Lodge, of course. And then, Trevor, you have Camp Grayling now up in Stony Rapids, which is mm -hmm. uh, on Black Lake, and then also the... Uh, Rio Lake camp that you have, which is such a neat place over there. And you sent me a message the other day that basically said you saved that camp from burning down or that camp was saved from burning down this year. Yeah, we, uh, you know, with the firefighters being so busy up in the north with so many fires, of course, they hang sprinklers and, you know, they're kind of like, well, you're kind of on your own. Let's hope it doesn't burn. So I was a little more proactive and uh, I had bought a water pump this year, figuring that there could be some issues and brought up a bunch of holes. And myself and another good friend of mine who was up helping me, we uh, we actioned a bunch of the fires and, uh, you know, I guess controlled them, put them out, made sure, uh, moved them, you know, wet down areas to keep ash and, and uh you know, anything from trying to float over. The one unique thing about uh, our area is, is the peninsula where we're on, the fire run about 15 miles down the peninsula, and then it split around a hill, so it split into a number of fingers. And at one time we had fire burning on all three sides around the peninsula, and uh, my fear was is that uh, some ash had flowed over onto the rest of the peninsula, and the other side of camp on the peninsula, it is basically unburnt. It's never been burnt. So, you know, it is very, very mature trees and uh, a little bit of ash in there and there's no way we would have stopped it. So, so we were just very proactive trying to make sure that, uh, you know, camp didn't burn. That's crazy. So you were, you had a water pump and then were you guys, you guys were just in the boat, just going up and down the shoreline fighting these fires or explain how, what you were doing exactly. Sure, yeah. Anything we could reach from shore, we would uh, pound the water to. And then uh, after, as some of the fingers were starting to creep down the peninsula itself, we laid out holes. We had 300 feet of holes. And we laid out holes and actioned off hot spots and, and uh, you know, knocked down whatever we could for fire out of the trees and that. And, and it was effective because I firmly believe that if uh, if we weren't there, I didn't do that. Camp would have burned. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Man, I'm going to try to, if I can here real quick, I'm going to try to pull up. Uh, I'll come back to it, but I'm going to try to find the, uh, I've got some pictures of, of the peninsula so we can kind of describe, show people what you're talking about, how to fire. Cause that, that had a fire, a fire actually came down that peninsula not that long ago, right? Well, that was 10 years ago. That fire came down the peninsula and, uh, but it burned fairly hot, but there was a lot of the, you know, there was still a lot of fuel left over, uh, especially as what task environment told me. So because all that fuel was able to creep. And then uh, there was strips that had never burnt of green bush. So that those were the main parts that were burning. 
when it got into the slash, it was just creeping. But uh, in the main parts, he was throwing ash all over. And, you know, uh, my fear always was when we were out there is that the west wind and we started getting the west wind gusted to 50 and uh you know humidity in the teens are next to zero and you know it was throwing ash everywhere and exposed to burning conditions so uh you know part of my background as uh, as resource management is i do have uh, quite a bit of training in that so so as we sit here on that hill and look at that picture that's all burnt unreal everything you see and some of it was extremely hot where it's actually burnt right down to the sand you know, uh, you can see this narrowed area as it comes down the peninsula. That is where we set up our main, I guess, defensive mode. And we wet that whole peninsula down. And then right at uh, the close side of that narrow part is where we had uh, sprinklers across to as well. But, you know, that whole area to the to the left, to the right, and straight, uh, straight ahead, that was all burning all at one time. And that was our biggest fear is just the ash coming on. Because as you can see, as you move down the peninsula, it is uh, solid trees back through where camp is here you know it's beautiful big mature never burnt trees so hmm. gosh i just can't imagine like just having to be there so they so ex explain how that works like the um uh the government will actually come in and put some sprinklers up for you yes uh our forest fire management center or public safety agency now they call them uh they do go for protection, you know, they, they protect first off uh, lives and then, uh, you know, businesses and then commercial timber is kind of how they, how they regulate things. And in the North, they have a let it burn policy and they just let it burn out unless it's starting to, you know, threaten any of those things. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was some excitement. There was a couple of days where I was pretty darn worried. I thought, oh my gosh, but you know, we had, we had a few boats there and we thought, well, if we have to, we'll just load, start loading stuff up, anything worth any value. And, you know, whatever we can, asset, you know, save some assets out of it at least because, uh, yeah, it would be terrible to have a total loss like that. And, of course, just taking it over this uh, this past winter, I sure as heck didn't want to have to start rebuilding afterwards, you know. And that's a good picture of the rest of the peninsula right there. That's, you know, that's mature, mature forest and it burned like crazy, eh? So that, sp that part didn't burn then? No, that's correct. Yeah, if it would have started, we would have never saved count. Yeah. Wow. Yeah man well um i'm glad you made it out of there safely of course obviously and uh nice nice work saving the camp <laughs> <laughs> well like i say i had to at least give it a shot i sure as heck wasn't just gonna sit back and let it burn man how so in that camp we should talk about what that camp looks like right now because uh, that real camp obviously has been there for a while, but the, mm -hmm. like, uh, the, the, you know, there's some new structures as part of that yes. camp. That's not that old. No, those new structures would probably be, uh, you know, five, six years old, I would think. And then like what we did to prepare is we took all the tents down cause we had the tents up this year, of course. So we took all the tents down, put them away, tried to put anything flammable away in case ash started coming. And then just, you know, uh, just action the fires and that's what we did for you know basically it was a week straight we were doing 12 to 15 hour days of just out there action and the fires it was pretty tough to be out on the lake and action the fires and not have a heck of a lot of fishing time in but you know we knew there'd be more fishing time coming on here's another look look at camp a little bit in that peninsula i guess that's going to go the other direction i thought i had a better mm. see if i can find a better one but in any case um Sounds like uh, most of the, the crisis has been averted, so that's good. Pretty wild fighting a yeah. fire. I bet you didn't expect to be fighting a fire up there this summer, Trevor. <laughs> well, it was a coincidence that I might have brought a water pump up with me and a bunch of hose. Well, yeah. Well, this, well, yeah. <laughs> well, you probably knew at that point it's been so dry, but uh, yeah. yeah, it's unreal. So you were saying that that big hill, you said it looked like, uh, that big hill was on fire and it was like 30 mile an hour winds and it looked like a city. So. Yeah, it was pretty wild. I have, uh, I took a landscape picture. We'll eventually get one of these pictures on our, on our website with it, that, uh, the whole hill was on fire and we took pictures at night and it was amazing. Actually that hill. And then there's, uh, it goes down to a point and then it goes around to another point. That whole area was on fire at one point, you know, we're talking miles, mm -hmm. three miles, maybe of fire, man. Well, um, <laughs> mother nature hasn't been very nice, uh, to us this year. <laughs> I feel like a uh, hot, dry fire season in the summer. And, uh, if you watched Taz and TV, 
we'll bring Barry on there, or half of Barry anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll bring Dan in here too, so we can be. There we go. Yeah, uh, that's better. We've gone through the first two episodes of Taz and TV, the new season of Taz and TV. And for those of you that got to watch it when when we arrived at camp on uh, day one, the camp didn't look like you expected it to look like, did it, guys? And he, Barry, you can answer no, this one. A lot of trees down everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of trees down everywhere. Uh, the water was really high. Yeah, it was uh, it was messy looking. So what you guys figure, Trevor, you figure it was a, like a heavy, wet snow? Yeah, I think so, like a heavy, wet snow, and then basically some big wind or whatnot, you know. Uh, it's kind of part of the deal, though. We've been pretty lucky. It's been a no It's time season. for another season, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry about out that. Out of all the years, that's okay. Out of all the years we've been involved with Taz, and I've never seen that. So, you know, I've been involved with it, I guess, since uh, my first trip up there would have been 05 or 06. So, you know, we've never seen that kind of an issue. Well, heck, that's 16 years, you know. And you look at some of these ice storms and things I've had in the past, and especially down east and that. So, you know, like, it's the extreme north, and the weather's extreme as well. It's strange to think about that because, yeah, there we go. Now we can watch it without sound. Perfect. It, mm. It's so dry here, and obviously it, it's, you've, you've got some dry conditions. You've got wildfire season going on everywhere right now. But there's, there, our rivers are so low. In fact, Minnesota just went into uh, some restrictions, some drought restriction, water restrictions because of the drought conditions here this week. And this because of all that snow i suppose and all the runoff i mean what do you figure tasman was up five six feet well it was definitely over the high water mark that we experienced last year you know uh but then also keep in mind that we had that high high water in the spring but really it's slowly continuing to run off over the course of the season i found and basically there was no rain for a couple of months you know yeah. so i would say 60 days or 60 something days with no rain uh doesn't matter how high the lakes are if you don't get any rain on shore, especially in the, that that mature jack pine forest. She's bone dry, hey. And then lightning, we had a lot of lightning storms that came over this year with no rain in them. So, hmm. well, you're always at the mercy of Mother Nature, of course. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, episode two, Taz and TV, uh, Trevor. We got to uh, we got to meet. Well, we met Jan in the first ep- episode, of course, but we got to learn a little bit more about. Uh, the relationship you guys had and uh, the two guys kind of, you know, would you say that the reason you are where you are is because of the relate the re- your relationship with them and the fact that you guys did as much fishing as you did growing up? Well, absolutely. We both had a passion, you know, uh, I know when I was a kid growing up, my, you know, what I wanted to be when I grew up always was a conservation officer. And uh, once I took that train, I realized, hmm, maybe I don't really want to be a conservation officer. I just want to continue to be in the outdoors more than anything, you know. Uh, but Jam was a big part of, I guess, the knowledge gain. And, and like he said in some of the videos there that, you know, you're not just a fishing guide. If you work up north, you're a carpenter, you're a bear baiter, you're a hunting guide, you're a fix it, whatever kind of guy. You have to have many skills to be able to succeed in the north. And, you know, I learned a lot of those skills with Jam over the years and yeah we had a lot of fun and did a lot of things you know he's caught a lot of big fish but <laughs> after his trip to uh to taz and trevor what did it what did he say to you about the lake trout up there yeah he's pretty excited you know he he knows it's a pretty damn special place there isn't uh uh you know there's not many places around where you could find it like that and uh and he appreciates it and he sure was appreciative to be able to spend some time and experience it with us has he been trying to get you to go back up there yet? <laughs> well, I, he doesn't have to say that. I already know if he had an opportunity, he'll be up there in two minutes. Yeah. That's be, you know, the deal, right? No, He's I think a diehard. We, we all would. Let's be honest. We all would. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I can't imagine, you know, uh, me going up and Barry not wanting to come along or not coming along. He'd fly in without me if he could, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> For sure. Well, uh, Camp Grayling is open and it'll be open until end of September, Trevor? Yeah, typically October 1st is what our season is we're going to run to this year. Uh, 
you know, and, and fishing myself. Now I've had an opportunity to get out onto Black Lake and spend some days out there with the guides. And uh, we actually just filmed the TV show up there with uh, with another one. I won't do a spoiler alert here, but uh, yeah, and we had some fun and uh, seeing the lake. Uh, wow. That's all I could say. It's amazing. The, the views, uh, the quality of the fish and the incoming, you know, creek streams, rivers, which are key for a healthy fishery. You know, yeah, it was great. I, I'm really looking forward to getting more time out there and uh definitely continue to move that venture forward that's for sure i and i'm excited to see more of black lake i didn't i haven't seen very much of it but re, i'm really excited about rio and that camp mm-hmm. in rio is such a such a neat lake over there and uh a yeah. cool place grayling lake trout huge pike my 50 inch pike and mm-hmm. uh and, and <laughs> piles and piles of walleyes that day yeah. uh fly fishing for walleyes in two feet of water unreal uh, fishcampgrayling.com is the website there and barry uh you got some whitetail hunts again this fall coming up yeah you bet uh starting probably november 1st uh, we'll have uh, five weeks of whitetail and uh yeah it seems like uh, i've talked to a few of the guys that have come across already and they seem to have pretty good experience coming across the border so hopefully everything stays smooth going and everybody come across pretty easy so yeah hopefully it's good yeah well too bad we couldn't get that border open a little bit sooner like two months sooner but uh it yeah. is what it is it's it's where we're at and uh, we're moving forward trails and outfitters.com is the website to learn more about berries uh whitetail hunting uh, bear hunting and of course he's on tobin lake there's a walleye or two in that lake from what i've mm-hmm. what i've been told maybe maybe a couple that are okay sized uh but uh gentlemen uh uh, glad glad you guys made it through the fires up there okay and good luck with everything and thanks for the time today on the show thanks Thanks for bringing us on there brett and watch the next episode of taz and tv by the way we deal with some storms and some lightning uh watch it tuesday night seven o'clock here or six o'clock back there in saskatchewan on the taz and lake lodge facebook and youtube channel hear more at sportingjournalradio.com or wherever you get podcasts 852 million acres of public land 147 million private properties all in the palm of your hand The number one hunting GPS app just got better. With hundreds of custom map layers, 3D and topographic maps, you can easily scout on the road or at home before you go. And now you can get important weather details, CWD detection, and even know what crops have been planted where. Get the most trusted hunting GPS app ever made. Onyx. Know where you stand with Onyx.